In 1898, the Philippine Islands became possession of the United States. During US occupation, all Filipino military forces were under the command of the President. In July of 1941, President Roosevelt issued an executive order calling members of the Philippine Commonwealth Army into the service of the United States Armed Forces of the Far East. Under this order, Filipino soldiers were entitled to full veterans' benefits. More than 100,000 Filipinos volunteered and fought alongside the Americans in World War II. Despite their courageous efforts, which led to Japanese surrender, Filipino soldiers were later stripped of their U.S. veteran status by President Truman's Rescission Act of 1946. Benefits such as health care, disability compensation, pension, burial, housing loans, education and vocational rehabilitation were suddenly and inexplicably taken away. To compensate, Congress recently passed a joint resolution which recognised and honoured Filipino veterans of World War II. Sadly, they have yet to receive the same privileges and benefits granted to American vets. Their demands continuously go unheeded, while Congress devotes its attention to shock jocks and steroids in pro sports. Within a matter of years, what's left of these veteranos, as they are often referred, will have died off, having received nothing in return for their blood and sweat. Another broken promise by the American government. They will try and deceive you. Soon, we won't be able to say anything at all. So when you have the voice to say something, say something. My name is David, and um, I'm from Illiteracy. We're a spoken word uh, collective over in the Bay Area. Um, I'm representing for them right now. Uh, so this poem is um, a dedication to all the Filipino veteranos. April 1942, Philippines. The roads lined with bodies of soldiers that marched ahead of them yesterday. Souls collapsed and thrown aside relieved the bodies that gladly met death today. Hungry and beaten, he could not understand the taunts of Japanese soldiers. Bakke at all, cracked to the back with the butt of a gun. More merciless was the sun. Burning in a purpose to run His legs ached from the weight His heart weighed maybe a ton In the day, it rained heat That felt like hell rose up through the fields At night, it rained from gunpowder clouds As raindrops made of steel His throat dry, his mouth numb But it didn't matter because they would beat him If he spoke until his hope broke Another gun was thrust to his neck The fluids were flowing freely from the cuts in his head He could no longer tell the difference between his blood and his sweat And from that point on He knew the only thing he could trust in was death See, three months before, his father was beheaded, his grandfather had met it, and then his brothers were ended. He lied graveless on the dirt bed of his village, he cried, but he made his eyes fight that violent image. 60,000 soldiers, 10,000 dead, 63 miles, but he survived the march. His band of brothers, brown and white, displayed more than purple hearts. He fought for two flags, one a yellow sun with three stars on a bed of white across oceans of red and blue. Two, 50 white stars against blue, red and white stripes, but only one would call him the sun. Flash forward, May 2004, California. Eyes still the type that a lady gets lost in. Apartment about the size of a small walk-in closet. Canned food, toothbrushes, hand-me-down sweaters from a kid in college. His only other possessions are memories stored in boxes. Cardboard window curtains so that the neighbors and that same damn son for 60 years ago can't peek through. It's not Malibu, but it's peaceful. On the sink is a couple dollars. The rest goes to his family in P.I., which lives without his father. But today is special, so he puts on his best clothes. Hush puppies, slacks, a slick looking butt on, dark blue trucker cap, World War II veteran written across the front and the pin of an American flag. Some do the same. Some with the symbol of freedom wrapped around the neck in a silken tie. They were proud to fight for this country. Proud to fight for this country. Brown to fight for this country. Now out the mind of this country. In the capital in Sacramento, he remembers his past, but war-torn battle scars with nothing to the suit sitting high in congressional mass. He waits patiently for the case to be decided, knowing full well he kept these same states of America united, but he was not invited to take a piece of America's pie on these Hormel Vienna sausages and Chef Buddy ravioli that sits in his cupboard, these arms are rifles to fight for the life of the whites, so why do they deny the rights he deserves? 
in this room, the small veteran's feet could very well be lost in their words. Promises still broken like the improved English he spoke and see. He's, he's devoted the pin on his breast. Has to be noted, don't it? No. Sixty years later when they're dying and they're in the last years like the government's just waiting for the veteranos to go extinct. America, why can't you simply give these men what they gave you instead of the bits and pieces and leftover scraps? You're calling it even when everyone else knows that it's crap. Benefits for your sons, but not island folks like him. But those bullets did not know the difference between brown and white skin. I said those bullets did not know the difference between brown and white skin. <laughs> Flash forward again to the present. I wish that two lines ago this poem could have ended. But Tom knows no pity. And old man's dreams are just a waste of table space on the governor's desktop. It's not over. And in less than a decade, these men will not be getting older. They will be gone. And I can only write of the past pains brought back in the wake of this coldness. And shed his tears upon the listening ears of those who have never known him. But tonight, but this soldier still fights, still marches, still taunted by dirty faces, but his dreams remain untarnished. See, history is left him behind, but tonight we will all remember the story of a hero. He fought for two flags, one was American, and he was Filipino. Peace. Sub-Republic.